Who shoot at a garlic festival? The Gilroy gunman's motive still eluding investigators tonight. He cut through a security fence to kill three people and injure more than a dozen on the last day of the garlic festival. He was killed by Gilroy police. And we now know the shooter made at least one social media post about white supremacy. 10 News reporter Laura Acevedo spoke to a local psychiatrist who says getting into the mind of a killer often traces back to what they find online. Laura. And the Gilroy Police Department did say that this 19-year-old purchased the gun legally in Nevada on July 9th. The psychiatrist I spoke to says what teens find on the Internet can often lead them down a dark path. Oh, shoot him. The victims are all under the age of 21. 20-year-old Trevor Irby, 13-year-old Kayla Salazar, and 6-year-old Stephen Romero. The gunman, 19 years old, Santino William Legan. I say that name with some hesitation because I don't believe that somebody like this deserves the notoriety, the recognition. ABC News has confirmed authorities are looking into white supremacist messaging the gunman posted on his Instagram page and a post criticizing the festival minutes before he opened fire. While officials look for answers, local psychiatrist Dr. Clark Smith says the Internet likely plays a huge role. Let us head over to London now and check in with Cindy Palm. Cindy, what are you watching this morning? Anne Marie, we begin with a prison riot in Brazil. At least 57 people were killed as rival gangs battled for five hours yesterday. Officials say gang members from one prison block invaded another at the Altamira jail in the state of Para, which is located in central Brazil. 16 of the dead were decapitated. The other is suffocated after part of the prison was set on fire, preventing guards from accessing the prison for several hours. Two prison officers who were taken hostage have been freed. Officials think this further proves their theory that the goal of the attack was to target the rival gang rather than prison guards. In eastern Pakistan, a military plane on a routine training mission crashed into a residential area overnight. 18 people were killed. 13 of those were civilians on the ground. Pakistan has seen frequent plane and helicopter crashes over the years. The deadliest air disaster happened in 2010 when an air blue plane crashed near the capital of Islamabad, killing all 152 people on board. New trouble with North Korea. Kim Jong-un firing off two more missile tests on the heels of last week's launch. Our foreign correspondent James Longman has all the latest for us. Good morning, James. Yeah, good morning, Amy. This is the second missile launch from North Korea in less than a week. Two short-range ballistic missiles were fired from the Hodo Peninsula on the east coast of the country. The South Koreans say they both flew some 155 miles at 19 miles altitude before dropping into the East Sea towards Japan. Now, these launches come amid faltering negotiations over the North's nuclear program and, of course, part of a familiar pattern of North Korean posturing to put pressure on the U.S. to drop sanctions. Donald Trump has spoken of his good relationship with Kim Jong-un, with this latest missile launch coming just hours after he reportedly sent Kim mementos of his brief visit a month ago when he became the first president to step foot into North Korea. Mike Pompeo spoke after the first launch saying he was very hopeful fresh talks would begin before too long. But despite the drama of major summits and military bravado, real progress on this dangerous issue seems to have stalled. Amy. Stalled indeed. On the Las Vegas Strip, right across from the Mirage, is this. 